Welcome to Under the Radar, where we squish down the complexities of Western civilization into a compact lump. I'm Kirk Powell. This episode came to my mind about a month ago when, in conversation with a friend, I used the term contempt for death. My friend said he didn't like that idea, that it seemed foolish to be angry about dying. I was a little confused at his reaction until I realized what had happened. He had interpreted those words in a natural way for a modern Western person. I was using them in a more antiquated sense derived from classical philosophy. The term contempt for death is one that you will find in philosophical texts all the way up to the 18th century at least. It was a recognized phrase, along with despising death, for holding death as something almost unworthy of consideration. That is to say, contempt for death would be something like contempt for a gum wrapper, seeing it as something neither good nor bad, but mostly indifferent. So how is it that our conceptions about a given topic, especially one as universal as death, can change so much that the phraseology that's familiar to the West can become essentially unrecognizable in just a couple of centuries? That's the subject of this episode. What is it that has happened to our larger cultural conception of death? Where have these changes come from? That's not going to be easy to answer in just a few minutes, but let's take a look at some of the prime candidates. The Lisbon earthquake of 1755 gets a lot of credit for changing people's ideas about how death factors into divine justice and benevolence. It was, for example, a weapon in the hands of the French writer Voltaire against the claim that God had made this the best of all possible worlds. So the idea that death was something natural, something that fit with God's providence and plan, began to slip away. A little more recently, World War I affected the way people saw death as it related to war and service. The high number of dead, combined with the obvious lack of progress in the war, eroded people's ideas that war was something beneficial to nations and honorable for individuals. So war, one of the very few human endeavors where death was not only honorable, but even from a certain perspective desirable, lost that quality in the minds of many Westerners. One final example. An awful lot of our modern medical technology and practices revolve around preventing death. There's a bit of a chicken and the egg problem here, since the desire to prevent death is related to our conceiving of it as a bad thing. However, I think a case can be made that the way we think about a given topic will be affected by the options that we are given. If all those options are on one side of a spectrum, we will naturally think about it in that way. Contemporary medical practice has been ridiculed by some groups for its undervaluation of death, but for the most part, Western culture has followed along with the idea that death is something to be avoided at all costs. There isn't really any hope of adequately answering this issue in this show, but hopefully I've shown that Western conceptions of death have significantly changed over time, and since our ideas about this topic are so fluid, we should probably expect them to slosh around more in the future. Next time on Under the Radar, we discuss limits. Not any particular limits necessarily, but our beliefs about limits at large. Thanks for watching.